All right, so this is the last part of chapter four. We're gonna move on to helminths. So this includes tapeworms, flukes, and roundworms. Um, when these um, microbes, these microorganisms um, are adults, they actually can be seen with the naked eye. So um, not all flatworms and roundworms are actually parasites and m meaning they, they aren't going to live on the, on or in the host um, all the time. Many will live free in the soil and water. So disease causing helmets spend part of their lives in the gastrointestinal tract of their host. So there are flatworms, which are very thin, um, usually segmented body um, divided into two categories. We have cestodes, which are the tapeworms, and then trematodes, which are flukes. Then we have roundworm roundworms um, referred to as nematodes. Um, these are elongated, cylindrical, and unsegmented. So here's some pictures of those. Um, quite unpleasant, especially if you look on YouTube and look for remnants of these. I don't recommend it. Um, here's some more pictures. So general worm morphology. So keep in mind, like I said before, Morphology is, you know, how, what they look like, their shape, their color, their arrangement. Um, so these are multicellular animals that are equipped to some degree with organs and organ systems. In pathogenic helmets, the most developed organ is the reproductive tract. Um, so there's a reduction in the um, digestive, exc excretory, nervous, and muscular systems in these, um, in these critters. So life cycles and reproduction. Complete life cycles include the fertilized egg, larva, and adult stages. Um, adults derive nutrients and reproduce sexually in the host body, which is sort of unpleasant when you think about it. Um, nematodes, um, so when we talk about nematode, nematodes, trematode, trematodes, and cestodes, um, how they're uh, reproductive parts are made up. Um, so nematodes, they have two separate sexes. So the male and the female, and they both differ in appearance. I apologize for this noise in the background. My dog is walking all over and click, click, clicking all over everything. So trematodes, um, the sexes can be separate or hermaphroditic. Um, and that means uh, hermaphro hermaphroditic, uh, means that um, it's like the male and the female parts all in one critter. Um, and then cestodes are generally hermaphroditic. Life cycles and reproduction. Um, the helmet life cycle, um, it must transmit in an infective form, either the egg or the larva, to the body of another host. The host in which the larva develops is known as the intermediate host and the adult and mating occur in the definitive or final host. And then there's the transport host, which is an intermediate that experiences no parasitic development. Sources for human infection are contaminated food, soil, and water, or infected animals. So here, again, here's another chart um, table that you should use as a reference. I don't expect you to memorize this, so, so don't spend a bunch of time on this. When you go to take the test, maybe just have this handy in case you do need to reference it. Just make sure that you know that, you know, what's what's on this chart in case, you know, instead of spending a lot of time looking stuff up. Um, so it talks about um, the common name, the disease or the worm, the host requirements, so what, what it needs to live, and then um, how it is spread to humans. So egg laying, um, fertilized eggs are released into the environment, provide, uh, provided with a protective shell and extra food to aid their development into larvae. So when these eggs are laid, um, we'll say, um, they, when they're released, there is additional stuff left for them um, so, um, so they can survive and develop. These eggs these fertilized eggs are vulnerable to the heat, the cold, drying, and predators, obviously. Um, and certain helmets can lay from 200,000 to 25 million eggs a day to assure successful completion of their life cycle. 
so the pinworm, um, the entero enterobius, sorry, vermicularis. Some of these are tongue twisters. Um, is the pinworm, and you might think, ew, ew, that's disgusting. You know, pinworm. It's it's a common and it's a common infestation of the large intestine, and these guys range from two to twelve millimeters long with a tapered curved cylindrical shape and um these this is common in the united states this is this is something that's that's not a rare thing and you have to wonder well oh my god you know um you know people must be really dirty to get these and that's not the case at all um all it takes and, and a lot of times it's kids that get them um if you have a sandbox in the backyard the neighborhood kit cats will go and lay their droppings in the sandbox and then the kid plays in the sandbox and um, and that is how this kind of infection can occur um, so the life cycle is the microscopic eggs are swallowed so kid plays in the sandbox and then comes in the house and you know eat some cotton candy or something, you know, licking their fingers. And as you know, everybody's that's listening to this is probably cringing and, you know, maybe even gagging a little bit. But if you've been around kids, you know, they like to put their hands in their mouths. And so, you know, I'm, I, yeah, I believe everybody's immune system needs to do their thing, but um, you're not going to be immune, immune to a pinworm infection. Um, so, um, washing those hands is really important before you eat, especially if you're, you know, the kids are playing outside. Um, so the microscopic eggs are swallowed. They're picked up from another infected person or objects that they have touched. Once they get to the intestine, the eggs will hatch. The larvae then will mature into adults within about a month. Then the male and female worms get busy and they mate and then the female will actually migrate to the anus and deposit the eggs. And what happens is this causes intense itching. And if it's a little kid, when they itch, they're gonna scratch. And so if they're scratching, they can, um, they can spread it that way to spread it to other kids, spread it to mom and dad, spread it to grandmoms, spread it to whoever. So um, yeah, keep those hands washed. Um, so this is just an illustration of, you know, I can just picture some, you know, kind of scary horror movie music in the background playing and in this scene here, um, as the little Petri dish is sharing her infection with the other little Petri dish, essentially, because, um, you know, that's what kids are, I guess sometimes, but, but anyway, so that's the life cycle of a pinworm. Um, so be familiar with that. Um, and it's all listed here on slide number 60. Uh, you may have some test questions related to this, um, directly related to this. Um, but that is it for chapter four. I hope you enjoyed this unit and actually no, there's another chapter on this unit. So if you have any questions, let me know on to chapter five.